Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers knockoff review. In today's video, thanks to my friend and Patreon Nico, we're taking a look at the T11 Rescuer. He had this in hand early and said, Ben, would you like to review it? And I was like, yes, yes, please. Huge fan of how this looks. This is an oversized version of the MPM Ratchet, but it's kind of based on what we got from Rescue Pioneer, the, I think it was Black Mamba version of that MPM mold. And uh, it's basically oversized to scale better with the existing movie figures. Uh, box is pretty much as you would expect. Let's take a look inside. And here we have him out of his plastic prison and he looks sensational. Uh, it really does make the world a difference kind of oversizing him. As you can see, he does have an LED function in his gun. He also has it in the head as well, but I didn't have batteries small enough. I used an AG4, I believe it was, in his gun. That takes two of those. But yeah, I didn't have any small enough to go in his head. Now, the paint applications don't differ hugely from his Rescue Pioneer counterpart, as you can see by this side-by-side -side comparison. It's mainly that height and just bulk that's different. Uh, definitely scales better, in my opinion, with the oversized figures that we currently have in our collections. But my goodness me, this piece is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that's a really good looking sculpt on that isn't it the paint apps make all of the difference i mean you don't realize just how much bigger he is until you have them side by side now as you can see from the color uh this version is kind of slightly more subtle it's not quite as vibrant uh pinstriping isn't quite as bright and pronounced on areas as well uh, it doesn't quite go down exactly the same they have changed a little bit up uh, it's the fine detailing as well i mean that's a little bit more pronounced on the lettering this one's a little bit more faded but fade is not necessarily a bad thing it doesn't look as new and as pristine as this one which i think i actually prefer and don't get me wrong this is an incredible figure uh, i've got the repaint of this as well and it does exactly what it needs to. But I think... Uh, I think it's just that kind of little bit more dulled down colour scheme. Really does kind of work in its favour. For a scale comparison, here he is alongside the oversized movie Ironhide. We've got Jazz there. We've got the legendary toys version of Bumblebee. Oh, wait, I'm still missing those front sections. That's the only one that's kind of really annoying me now. Bumblebee. I don't think we've had a decent alternative version of Bumblebee that scales yet and that is the 3.0 Optimus Prime that is the same size you will take a few millimeters with the Weizhang Black Apple Optimus Prime there they are with the Black Mamba version of Optimus Prime kind of filling most of that screen section there he's a big boy but again that's a really nice scale I think there's any like a foot between Ironhide and ratchet officially head to head. Uh, I mean, that, that kind of really works in my opinion. That's definitely more in keeping than what we initially had. So, I mean, if we start bringing in the likes of the MPM sized prime, that's definitely not very in keeping, I don't think. I mean, in my opinion, the MPM size prime scales really well with that MPM sized ratchet. That's a good size, but I like these bigger, kind of oversized bots. And the Bumblebee doesn't really scale with the Prime. Bumblebee's too big, which is why I've gone for the much larger Prime. And in doing so, the Jazz then kind of scales. I think that section there, I think they scale really well. Look at the articulation head, can look up, down left and right not the greatest range on there but we do have a little bit uh, the mouth can open and close uh, the neck shroud 
does also rotate. Now, out of the box, yours won't quite look like this. Uh, these need to be pulled out and turned around. This needs to be separated where these tab in underneath and the wheels need to be pushed back. That's kind of how you're gonna get it the most screen accurate. Let's turn this off so we don't blind everybody. Uh, arms are on ratchet, they come out and down. There's a pivot on here. Now the way I've got it screen accurate does hinder the articulation slightly. Left and right, see, because everything kind of now hits together, but that is a very kind of accurate look for him. Got articulation on the fists here. Got those posable thumbs. We've got those cutting blades on his wrists. Uh, we actually get two missiles, or the kind of uh, launching missiles, so they can be added on here. Uh, but I don't uh, generally put those on because they can pop off and they do get lost, but you do get them nonetheless. There, there is a waist rotation on him, albeit mine is very, very stiff. Uh, this doesn't quite tab in as nicely as the Rescue Pioneer. Once you've latched this top panel piece here onto that window section, you can't quite pop this and that panel in as far as you'd like. See, I've just popped that in and now this section has come untabbed from there. So it's kind of, you need to try and find middle ground. Uh, legs that far forwards, that far back, out to the side, upper thigh rotation there. Bend on the knee, not a great bend, but a bend nonetheless. Lovely, lovely pivot and bend on those ankles, some rocker in there as well, and we've got some motion on those feet. So you get a really kind of nice, wide, secure stance on Ratchet. Kind of have him posed a little bit like he's an older, older bot there. This comes up, move the arm just behind, something like that. I mean, it's a really gorgeous looking piece. No denying that whatsoever. I think, in my opinion, this is by far the best looking ratchet. I mean, that's got to be props to Takara and Hasbro for making the MPM in the first place, but then these bootleg companies for oversizing it and going to town on the paint applications. I mean, what a difference some paint can make. I mean, that head sculpt absolutely sublime isn't it so much detailing in there now to get him transformed up uh, we need to kind of de weapon him so remove his weapons I've got this kind of hose here this is a rubber hose uh, also I think the official transformation is to have these tabbed in to here um, you can, but it really hinders the articulation, it just stops everything from kind of moving. I mean, these do work independently to these hinges. So, I mean, you can have that kind of tabbed in and that around, and the arm will still kind of work independently to that, but no, really not a fan of that. But anyway, yeah, compress this section down, compress this section down. Uh, these small tabs on here are going to come away. Come on. See if I can show you what we're doing here. We're pulling these sections away from this torso piece. There we go. One. And Two, there we go. That's going to come out, that's going to come out, and this is going to come back up and under like this. These sections here are going to rotate. This is going to come up and over. This bit here is going to rotate around to the middle, come in, and there's a tab just on there, like so. And that's going to line up. Do that with both sides. Then untab 
these pieces from the back. So that's going to come away from here if you manage to get yours in. And then this one's going to come up. Up, there we go. This then collapses down. This is going to fold out. And then this is going to unfold. This can then come back over. Come back over. And this is all going to come down. There we go. And compress. That's all going to form the back panel. And boom, and grab this windscreen section, like so. These are then going to come up and extend, come up and extend. The window is going to come all the way back. There we go. And you want to bring this bit out and up and bring the arms around, and the wrist is going to come in down and that's going to collapse and these fingers are going to just rock underneath like so and that's going to come up to the side like this this whole head and neck brace section rotates around and while i've got this free i'll show you this bit here is magnetic on the back here so when you want to put your batteries in this is just magnetically held in which is actually um, kind of really nice touch. Uh, this is then going to come over and they can just push and uh, tab and locate onto those shoulder panels and onto the shoulder panels. Uh, these are going to come down, this is going to come down, this is going to disengage away from this point here. So pull that away like this. These are going to come around and around and rotate and rotate. Now this is the kind of front panel piece kind of stays where it is and the entire middle torso panel is going to rotate around like so. Have these come and disengage? No, no, they are still attached. It's one of the first pieces that normally kind of falls out. But there we go. Are they? Oh, they have. There we go. Pop those. Pop those back in like this. And bending this over, you can see that this is going to rotate. This comes up. This should, he says, line up with those panels just there. Come on, tab in. Thank you. Oh, come on. Why are you not tabbing in? There. And this, if it hasn't already, needs to fall down to the front. Uh, the legs rotate at the thighs. The waist is also going to rotate. Now, I've just folded some of this over already so you can see what it's going to look like. Basically, you need to untab the leg sections. They are going to come away. Come on. slide outwards they separate like so it's going to come outwards we have this piece here which comes up and then this piece here uh, basically opens outwards again and then that's going to fold down the heel spur folds over and basically there's a hinge here which untabs like so and this collapses that's going to fold over and then bending it on that hinge there that then allows this to come in uh, normally you wouldn't pull this section over to begin with uh, normally that would be one of the kind of last things 
you do to get everything into place. Otherwise you're now having to kind of duck and dive everything in like I'm doing here, which is not really the ideal way of doing it, but it's uh, easier for me to show and tell when things are kind of moved out of the way. Uh, see, that's nearly, nearly level. It's just a matter of uh, straightening this joint out. And then, uh, there, making sure that this all is gonna go into position. Come on, oh, there we go. And there, and there. Right, now before I do this door, the arm needs to come in. Down. And around this section here comes out to the side and you've got a tab here and that should have lined up with with that one there come on there we go that's in and same for this side it's going to come in that's going to push and tab in come on there we go on there keeping those out of the way and then this can now slide up and angle correctly this is going to come down sits behind this section here and that slides and then it's a matter of just lining everything up here so it all tabs into position this is all going to compress this will compress and then this will come over and you see there's various different tabs here for this to line up and if you can see there's a tab behind this door that pushes in and lines up with those arms as well and this is the last last joint to slide in as well and then just make sure everything's tabbed in fully Ooh, same on this side there we go that's in that's in these are tabbed in on top and there we have them it's gonna roll i've got the blade sitting at the back here because it reminds me of the mask vehicles but you don't have to have that it's uh, designed to kind of come up and uh, sit over this lip like so to sit on the back there but I liked the old mask vehicles so that kind of really reminded me of those this is actually pretty close to being mask scale as well I mean having ratchet alongside Matt Tracker there that's actually something I think could work. I think it's slightly off. But display wise, it actually looks really, really nice. A very tidy piece. Uh, having it as big as it is actually makes the transformation for me easier because I can actually get things into place. Uh, let's bring in some others for scale comparison. You have the Black Mamba Optimus Prime. Again, I think that scale works. Uh, I don't know, actually, maybe, you know, Prime would be much bigger, wouldn't he? I think, I don't know, I don't think any of these vehicles kind of scale very well. Uh, we've got the Movieverse Ironhide, that's the MPM Ironhide there, not the oversized version. And then we've got uh, Dino and of course Jazz as well there. So the only real oversized one there is Prime and I don't think that scale actually works that well. I think uh, maybe it's, I don't know, the doors are a similar sort of size. It's really hard to tell, isn't it? And then here we have the vehicle mode alongside. Again, it's still the KO, but it's the recoloration uh, done from, was it Age of Extinction where he had this color scheme or it might have been Dark of the Moon. But either way, uh, it's, you get an idea of that scale there it's about i don't know maybe one and a half times bigger 
I think it's definitely got that extra bulk to it. It doesn't have uh, the detailing on the font. It's a little bit more uh, kind of blurred again. But again, again, this pastel-esque color scheme, the paint is definitely a lot less vibrant than the previous incarnations. And it definitely works, in my opinion, something I really, really do appreciate is a good paint scheme. And this one definitely has it. Uh, let's just bring in MP10 as well, because everybody has a copy of MP10 or some description, don't they? But yeah, it's a really solid piece. Uh, actually got the spelling right, which uh, is always, always a bonus. Uh, let's just remove these so you guys and gals can see exactly what it's meant to look like. We've got the fire department on the back there. Search and rescue. Really kind of nice, tidy underside. There we go. One very good oversized MPM ratchet. Huge, huge thanks to Nico for sending this over to me. Uh, honestly, couldn't wait to get this in hand and he got it really early. So bless him, he sent it over and I am incredibly appreciative. He's a good lad. And this is a superb figure. Until next time from myself and the rest of the collectibles household. Thank you all very much for watching. Goodbye.